Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com. Recently a reader asked me, hey, I cannot find the Ethernet IP capacity tool anymore. He's like, I can't find it anywhere. And you know what? I went up to ab.com too, and I couldn't find it anywhere. I couldn't find any mention of it. In fact, the only thing I did find was an Ethernet toolkit, and that link goes to a dead page. So I don't know what's going on. But in any case, there is a replacement for that old tool, which was a really cool, easy to use tool. And that replacement is actually inside of IAB. So let's go ahead and create a new project and I'll show you what I mean. So I'll click on new project. I'll put a C at the end here. And right here, right? It says Ethernet IP capacity subsystem. And that's the replacement. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Okay, give it a minute to boot up here. And what we'll see when it comes up is something that looks very similar to the old tool, which is great because that's the one I know. So the fact that they kept it the same and kept the, you know, the same look and feel makes it very comfortable for users of that old too. Okay. And here it is. Now I'm going to stop by choosing a controller here. Let's see. I just looking through the list here. You can see some old stuff, some new stuff, but a lot of the old stuff isn't in here. So just keep that in mind. If you needed to do a system that, you know, like an L61, they took that out of here. That's sad. But in any case, let's do an L71. Okay, and what I can do here is I can put my mouse right over this question mark and it tells me I have 500 CIP connections. Well, that's a lot of connections, right? If I were to choose an L16, a little compact logic L16, I only get four. <laughs> so that's a big difference. So let's uh, do that one since it's uh, more limited. And let's come over here and we're going to select some IO. And we're going to go to distributed IO and we're going to choose some point IO. And this right here, okay, this is a multiplier saying, hey, how many chassis do you have that are identical to this? You may not have any identical chassis, but there's only eight spots on this screen where you can actually select I.O. So you're limited to that. So if you had more than eight unique chassis, you would have to actually try to double some up. In any case, I'm going to say I have two identical chassis just like this. And I'm going to say, let's see, I have, let's say I have 10 digital modules and they're rack optimized. Typically you want them rack optimized. And then for analog, I only have two analogs here and I'm going to leave the RPIs at the defaults. Okay. But you could have, uh, you know, three sets of analog modules at different RPIs. Okay. So let's go ahead and click okay on that. We'll hit compute. And down here you can see, Hey, I'm using two and I have two remaining. So that's two ethernet nodes. That's these two racks up here. And then you can see utilization about 4% packets per second around 300. And, uh, you know, I'm well within my limits of this particular processor. So let's go ahead and add some more here. We'll go to distributed IO and we'll do, let's do some flex IO. Okay. In this case, I'm going to do three chassis. I'm going to do 10 here. Whoops. Hmm. And well, let me put 10 in. I wonder why. Well, let me try putting in some more in here. Ah, Flex, I only, only can have eight modules per adapter. So that's why it's telling me it won't let me put in as much as I want. So let me drop this down to six. So I have six digital modules. I'll have two analog modules. I'll leave all the defaults. And I'm going to leave that count at three. And let's go ahead and click on OK here. And we will compute again. And look, I have minus one remaining. I have too many because if we remember... He only can have four drops on Ethernet. He's a very inexpensive little controller. So how do we get around that? Well, I'm going to have to change him down to two. Okay. Now you may want to put some uh, panel views in here. Um, typically, your operator interface I'm not going to use. Um, they're going to they're going to contribute to the um, you know network bandwidth usage, but they're not going to use up one of your IO limits, one of your IO drop limits, as we saw this unit only had four. So let's say how many of these I'm going to have. Let's say I have three, four devices. Let's say I have a thousand tags and this is the CIP connections. That's default for the panel view plus and string tags. We'll say 10. This RPI is way too slow. We'll do 50 milliseconds and that's good. Yeah, that may be a little low, but uh, we'll go with it. Okay. So I just added four more panel views to this system. So let's go ahead and do a compute. Okay. So I have zero remaining. So you can see those panel views did not take up any of my ethernet nodes. And, uh, oh, though, look at my utilization. 
I'm too much, just too much. I got too much data I'm trying to pull too fast with my four panel view. So let's go ahead and change that. Maybe we can't do 50 milliseconds. We'll do 100 milliseconds. And then let's say we only have 800 tags per panel view. Okay, let's compute that again. Okay, I'm in the yellow. <laughs> Total utilization, 99.2. So I'm right on the edge there. Probably wouldn't have much luck trying to program this controller with the, all that uh, bandwidth being used up. But in any case, this gives you an idea of how this tool works inside of IEB. Very, very similar to how it worked as a separate utility. And I, I got to commend them. I think they did a great job. Now, one thing you may want to do is change the switch here. So let's go ahead and do that. And what I'm going to do is make it an unmanaged generic eight port switch. Well, let's go with 16. Okay. And now let's compute it one more time. Okay. Well, you can see nothing really has changed. You can actually add the Rockwell Stratix switches. Some of them you can actually add to the IO tree. They can actually be a node on your list. But with a little guy like this, where you only have four, you know, total Ethernet nodes, probably don't want to do that. But in any case, the final thing I want to show you is this generate feature, which is really cool. And uh, by doing that, it actually created my uh, network layout for me. And it actually, if I go to hardware here, it actually created each of the nodes. Now it used generic default modules because, you know, I didn't tell what my mix was. Or, you know, did I have, you know, OB8s or IB8s or, I, you know, it doesn't know. So I put in, uh, you know, what, what the default modules are, but it got me all my chassis going, um, you know, and there's my uh, 4HMI. So a very cool feature that's free and that's part of IEB. Now, if you thought this video was helpful, please give me a like and a thumbs up. And if you know anybody who would like to learn how to program Control Logics, Panel View Plus, VUSC, and more, please ask them to visit me over at theautomationschool.com. And with that, that's the end of this video. Until next time, peace.